Good day, everyone. I'm Attorney John Destocumento, and this is a continuation of our lecture series in copy reading and headline writing. This is the third part of the series, and this, this part will tackle the symbols, traditional symbols that are used in copy reading and headline writing contests. Okay, so to begin with, the first symbol is the indention symbol. So as a rule, every paragraph must be indented. So that means that if there is a paragraph that you see in the erroneous article that has not been indented, then you're supposed to put that L symbol there. But just a word of caution, if the paragraph has already been indented, then there's no need for you to add the L symbol because normally the way that I check um, copy reading contest is that it's right minus wrong. Also, in a case where the paragraph consists of, let's say, two sentences, and we said that a paragraph or the rule in uh, news writing is one sentence, one paragraph rule. So in cases where the paragraph contains two or more sentences and you wish to set the second and third sentences, for example, to new paragraph, there is actually no need for you to put an L sign before the second and the third sentences to indent them because the new paragraph symbol would already suffice. That's already enough. The second symbol is what we call new paragraph and known paragraph symbol. So basically, this, this is just a symbol for setting a sentence as new paragraph. So that looks like an inverted P. And then the snake symbol is also used to join um, to join sentences into one paragraph. So you use the run on sign or the snake symbol um, to set a sentence as part of one paragraph along with the first sentence. Now the next symbol is the capitalization symbol. So basically, um, this is just... Um, a review on proper nouns and common nouns. We capitalize proper nouns. We uh, lowercase common nouns. And then um, in cases where an entire word needs to be capitalized, you don't have to individually triple underline each and every letter of that word. You simply um, triple underline the entire word altogether that needs to be capitalized. Say, for example, in a case of a date line, iba the date line, Cebu City, Philippines, for example, the words Cebu City, iba, according to the AP style book, it needs to be, or they need to be set in all caps. And unfortunately, in the copy of the news writer, it was not set in all caps. So what you should do there is just to triple underline Cebu City, the two words all together and not individually triple underline C, triple underline E, and so on and so forth. It should be the entire word that must be triple underline. Now to set in lowercase, you just use a, um, a slash symbol. So if the word is a common noun, you just set that in lowercase. And if it happens to be that, let's say for example, an entire word, has been set in all caps when it should not be the case because it might be it might just it it may be just a common noun. So you don't also have to individually slash the letters in that word. All you have to do is just to slash the first letter of that word that you wish to set in lowercase and then just run a venculum from that from the first letter up to the last letter that you wish to set in lowercase. The next symbol is the close up or connect. So it is used to join um, separated words to make them into one word. So we use the bridge over and bridge under symbol in order to close up or connect. So an example would be made a breakthrough and breakthrough is written as two words. Since breakthrough in this case is used as a noun, then you can use the close up or connect symbol by adding the bridge over bridge under signs. The next symbol is to delete then close up. So for example, never lose the keys. Um, the word lose is misspelled because there are two O's in the word when there should have only been one. 
So the, the O that we need to delete is the second O and not the first O because it's the second O that makes that is redundant or that is useless. So we slash or uh, put a, the delete symbol, the pigtail symbol on the second O and then bridge over, bridge under to make it as one word or to join the separated words together. Now the next letter is, uh, the, the next sign is to replace letter. So never ask for loose change. So if that's the case, need to replace uh, letter A with O because loose change, loose is spelled as double O. It's not L-A-O-S-E, but L-O-O-S-E. So what you should do is just to slash the A because that's the wrong letter and then you write O on top of A. Okay. Next is to delete a word and to add space. So to delete a word and to add space, all you need to do is to delete the redundant word, the second hit, for example, in this in this in the in your screen. The word to be deleted is a second hit. We delete it using either a by crossing it out with a slash or by using the pigtail symbol to delete it. And then we just use the bridge over symbol and no bridge under symbol this time. No bridge under because otherwise you might join it by. It's so it, there should be a space in between them. So you just use the bridge over symbol after the deletion sign. Now the next symbol is to delete a word. So to delete a word, you just use the pigtail symbol here. A beautiful teacher. So you, you want to delete beautiful um, because you think that makes the article opinionated. Then um, that's okay you can simply use the pigtail symbol. And then to abbreviate or to not abbreviate and to spell out or not to spell out, the symbol there is just the in circle symbol. And then we also have the transpos transposition symbols for words and letters that have been jumbled. So for example, now on conditions table. So the correct words should have been now on stable condition. So we just transpose the words using the transposition symbol in order to properly write them. Sometimes it may not be a word, it can be letters within a word that need to be transposed also. Next symbol is to syllabicate. So the syllabication symbol is used when um, when there's not enough space in the right margin. So when there's not enough space in the right margin for the word, then you have to syllabicate that word using the syllabication symbol, double slash and then hyphen. So that would signal that you need to syllabicate the word so that the rest of the word, the other syllables will be entered to the next line. So that syllabication symbol. Next is to kill one line sentence. So to kill a one line sentence, you simply use the um, you simply use the snake symbol, or the I mean the pigtail symbol. Um, uh, but to kill a sentence made up of more than one line, you just box the sentence, and uh, write an X in the box to kill a sentence made up of more than one lines. But I think the more important question to remember here or to ask here is when are we supposed to kill a sentence? So these are the instances where killing a sentence may be justified. So for ex the first one is when there is when the second sentence is a repeated sentence, meaning to say that the second sentence is a duplication of the first sentence. So obviously there's a repetition there redundancy in other words. So it's okay to kill the second sentence in that case. Another instance where killing the sentence is justified is um, in cases where, there, where, where the second sentence is irrelevant, okay? So you study the entire article and the article is uh, discussing one topic or two or more related topics and then here comes this sentence, which is um, very unrelated 
to the overall theme or topic being discussed in the rest of the sentence. So in that case, you need to also, um, you need to also, um, what's this? You need to also kill that particular sentence for be for for not being relevant. Then the third sentence, the third time, the third instance where killing of a sentence is uh, is allowed is when the second or the is is when a particular sentence is um um let's see kill okay when this when when a sentence expresses an opinion of the news writer so you read the particular sentence and the sentence ex sounds as if it's the opinion of the news writer and you would know that it's a it's it sounds like the opinion of the news writer because the opinion is not attributed to a particular source. So no one has been cited for the opinion being mentioned. So the opinion, whether it be positive or negative, whether it be a praise or a criticism, it must be deleted because in news writing, we make sure, we, we, we try to make it as fair and neutral as much as possible, as objective as possible. The only way to do that is to attribute the opinionated statement to the source or to the speaker of that statement. So if the statement, for example, presents an opinion and the opinion, uh, the sentence now seems like the, the a statement of the news writer itself, you might want to consider deleting or killing that particular sentence for being opinionated. Okay, so... Okay, so um, those are the instances where killing a sentence is allowed. Now, the next symbol is the box symbol for retaining the spelling. So say, for example, in the copy of your news article, of the news article, there is a word. Uh, it's either a name of a place, a person, or a thing that appears to have been, to have been misspelled. So the, the compulsion there of the copy reader is actually to correct it and to provide the correct spelling but actually um that is not the case for uh, it, that is not the case for for all incorrectly spelled words or names in the in the article so the reason why we need to box it is to actually retain the spelling but uh, why do we why do we retain the spelling so take note that uh, you're, as, as mentioned, as explained in the first part of this lecture, that the job of a copy reader is to ensure that the, the article, the news article is free from errors, whether those errors be of facts, spelling, grammar, style, punctuations, what have you. So if you see there a word or a name that appears to have been misspelled, in order for you to double check or verify that that indeed is the spelling of the name of the person, for example, then the first thing that the copy reader must do in the real world is to contact the news writer and double check it with him or her and ask the news writer if that in indeed is the um, spelling for the name of that person, place, or thing because um, that is the way to double check. That's part of the discipline of verification that we do um, within our newsroom to ensure that uh, the news that we're publishing is or are accurate. Now, after having confirmed that that is the correct spelling indeed of the person, place, or thing, mm -hmm. the copy reader will, not, will now have to box that, that word or that name in order to retain that spelling. Why do we have to retain that spelling? It's because... A copy reader is simply the first person in a long chain of gatekeeping process. Uh, he's, he's not the only person who can implement changes in the news article. After the copy reader, um, the, the, the copy edited article will be forwarded to the layout artist. The layout artist will lay out the page and then he will print a sample of the layout. It will be shown to the copy reader. And if the copy reader has no issues with 
the layout and all the headlines, etc. If he or she is satisfied, then that sample page will be shown to the news editor. If the news editor is okay, it will be shown to the managing editor. From the managing editor, it will be uh, shown to the editor-in-chief, from the editor-in-chief to the publisher, from the publisher to the proofreader. So that is the chain of gatekeeping that is implemented in most newsrooms. Therefore, copy reader, they're not, they're not the, the only person who may change or implement changes. So if, for example, the EIC later on happens to see that Juan de la Cruz is misspelled in the story, he, the, the EIC may actually change that to Juan de la Cruz with a J. But since the copy reader has already verified that the correct spelling is Juan with an H, and since the copy reader has already boxed that to retain the spelling, then the, the act of boxing it um, is your is a copy reader's instruction to the next people in line, to the next gatekeepers that, hey, please retain the spelling because I've made my verification already with the news writer. And that's why that's the importance of boxing the, the word. But not all words that appear to have been misspelled are automatically boxed during the contest, okay? So you have to read the, the instructions. Um, normally the instruction would say the names of the names of the victims and suspect are correctly spelled. So that is normally your signal or in Filipino, tama ang pagkabaybay ng pangalan ng biktima at ng suspect. So in the body of the news article, you just look for the names of the victims and the suspect, for example, and then box them. That's the, that's the time that you need to box them. Otherwise, if there are no instructions to that effect, then uh, just leave those names as they are, as is. Okay. The next um, symbol is the insert, uh, insertion symbol. You just use the correct mark. So, for example, state of the address. So, there's a missing word nation. You just insert the word nation using the correct mark. Um, sometimes it's just a letter that is um, missing. So you still use the correct mark and um, insert the missing letter. Okay. Now to align text to the center, you have their inverse brackets. You just have to enclose the words to be set to center, to be aligned to the center using inverse brackets. Now to what else? How about to flash text to the left? Okay, so this is a symbol for flash text to the left. The other one is flash text to the right. Then the next symbol is flash text down. So with flash text down, basically, you just uh, move flash text up and flash text down. You flash text up mean, meaning you move the text up because the text has been entered more, more than one time. Diba supposedly the normal is you just enter one line one line after another in an article. But here comes this part of the news article that has been entered more than one line. So you have to flush text up in order to move the text down upwards. Okay. Now, step means to undo the last correction, meaning to restore. You simply put the word step on top of the word that has been erroneously or inadvertently deleted or unintentionally omitted. So there's an instruction there that says a word has been inadvertently omitted or mali, um, may salitang maling nabura ang patnugot. So in those cases, you just write the word stat on top of that deleted word or crossed out word. To align left and right margins, you just use two parallel lines, okay? If the left margin is already aligned, then there's no need for you to write those two parallel lines. To draw those parallel lines, you only draw the two parallel lines if the margins have not been aligned. Okay, otherwise, write minus wrong. Now, to add punctuations, you just add a period where it's needed. So he surrendered. If that doesn't have a period there during the contest, then you just uh, write the period and encircle. Or 
as expected, they were. So write the missing comma. So insert a caret down the mark and then write the comma inside the caret mark. Or you can also use the caret up mark for uh, punctuations that are to be placed on top, such as th these quotation marks. So caret up plus quotation marks. If there are missing um, quotation marks. To add a space, you just use the Z symbol, okay, to add space. And then to italicize text, um, you just underline the word or words to be italicized. It's not automatic that the non-English words in an English category are to be automatically um, set in, ital in italics. You have to wait for the instruction of the judge. You have to read the instruction. If there is an instruction to that effect, that's the only time you have to italicize non-English words. Same is true for Filipino. Just because uh, there are English words in Filipino category does not automatically mean that you need to set those um, English words in italics. You have to read the instructions if there is a specific instruction to that effect. And to set in bold face, wavy line under the word or words to set in light face, that's the opposite of bold face. Uh, you just write LF, meaning light face, and then encircle the word and encircle LF. To arrange the jumbled paragraphs, you just write paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and so on. Um, in the before the start of the first uh before the start of the paragraph. So you just write those symbols there. Then to mark to mark the end of the story, you use um 30 encircled. If the story is complete or finished, you use 30 encircled for both English and Filipino. But if the story is not yet finished, it is unfinished, it is incomplete, you can use the word more for English and pa for Filipino. And then to insert a hyphen, caret mark, and then uh, a dash and a hyphen um, followed by a slash. Uh, there should be a slash here after the uh, um to the right of the hyphen here, here, here. There should be a dash here um, to the right of the dash and hyphen to insert that hyphen. And then to insert a dash, either an M dash or N dash. So caret mark and then insert one over N. If it's an N dash or one over M, it's if it's the longer, which is the M dash. Okay. So those are your basic and traditional copy reading symbols. Now, at this point, let me talk about the slug line and printer's directions for the lead body and headline, as well as the unit. I think I was a bit, sorry, I think I was disconnected. Okay. Now, um, as I was saying, the slug contains the slug line contains first the slug. Uh, the slug is just a a word that describes, that identifies, that labels the news article. Usually, the practice is just to lift keywords from the headline and write it as your slug. So, in this case, if your headline is Lapolapo kills Magellan, you can just use Lapolapo dot 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 as your slug. If it's about an accident, you can use accident dot dot dot. If it's about palarong pambansa, you can say palaro dot dot dot. So do not overthink. Just uh, come up with any keyword or phrase about the, that that will be um, a keyword from the news article. Okay. After the let's see, after the for the slug, you can you need to also write the name of the news writer. So if the news was written by John Destacamento, you can write J. Destacamento after the slug or below the slug. After the name of the writer, that's the name of the publication for which that news was written by the writer. So if it's written for the Freeman, you write use the Freeman. If it's written for Manila Bulletin, you use Manila Bulletin. Or Philippine Star, you use Philippine star so those details are actually found in the instructions and then the date when that news article was written you also put that in your slug line so all in all there are four items under your slug line the slug the name of the writer the name of the publication for which that particular piece of news was written 
as well as the date when the news writer wrote that article. Now, towards the the other side of the the upper right corner of the article being copy read, you also leave some printer's direction for the lead and body. For P Filipino, it's not called lead; it's called pamatnubay. For 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 body, it's called texto. So you really have to write. I think I was disconnected again. Sorry for the unstable internet connection here. But uh, as I was saying, uh, for the printer's direction for the lead and body for English, it's called lead and body. For Filipino, it's pamatnubay and texto. So for the lead the and body, the uh, I mean for the lead or pamatnubay, the standard printer's direction. Um, that's, that means that if in the absence of specific instructions, uh, to the contrary, you may use the standard printer's direction for the lead or pamatnubay. And that is 24 M's, 14 TNRB. It means that um, when the layout artist layouts your lead, it should run across two columns because every column is worth 12 M's. So 24 M's, 14 TNRB simply means the 24 M's there means uh, two columns and then 14 TNR means that the font size of your lead is um, 14 and that type, the font style is Times New Roman. And it is bolded for the body, 12 M's. For the body, 12 M's, 10 TNR means um, one column, 12 M's. And 10 TNR means uh, that the body should be layouted in such a way, should be presented in such a way that the text is size font size 10 and font style times new roman that's the setting so that's your standard printer selection for the lead and body but during the contest other it may be that the the speaker the judge will ask for i will say that the lead should run across one column only so instead of 24 ms you just use 12 ms or if the set if it says the lead should run across three columns so you should write 36 M's instead of 24 M's and so on and so forth. Okay. Now let's go to printer's direction for the headline. 3-28 BB ROM stands for three columns, 28 font size. BB is the name of the font, but only bold, and ROM means it's not bolded. So... That's a standard printer selection for the headline. Then again, if during the contest, you will be provided with um, a specific number of columns, specific font size, specific font style, and whether it's bolded or not. So you have to follow the instructions accordingly. And then it's 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 um, underlined if the headline that is asked is only one deck. If it's double deck or two decks, uh, you have to double underline it. If it's triple deck or three decks you have to triple underline your printer's direction for the headline as well then you can also write dsfl with kicker under the printer's direction for the headline if it is to be set in flash left down style format with kicker and you have to encircle it since it's in a form of instruction okay then and then for the unit counts, um, sometimes the judge will not require a specific unit count to the headline. So consider it as your lucky day. But during the competition, there may be some limitations to the units. So uh, just make sure that your the headline that you created, the headline that you wrote, uh, is within the uh, limit provided by the judge during the contest. So for purposes of Unit counting, this is our guide for uh, unit counting. So you have capital M and capital W, two units, all other capital letters except J lift, 1.5 units, and so on and so forth. You can just study these um, uh, these unit counting measures. Uh, but basically, this, this is devised. Uh, this is used in order to ascertain that um, your headline is just fit or enough for the space allotted for it in the 
newspaper. Okay, so that's it. That's the end of part three of the of this uh, four part lecture series in copy reading. And see you on the in the last and fourth video, uh, which is all about headline writing. Good day, everyone. Promise.